start for first. Marco! Go backwards. You guys can hear that, hopefully. What's going on fellow Redliners? Welcome back to another video. We got a problem with the gen today. I got, as you guys can see, I got the lights set up over here and we are tackling something, well, in that general vicinity. Uh, and I will play you some clips in a few minutes to show you guys, or a few seconds for you guys, to show you guys what the hell is going on with this. We will have more Corvette content to come in, uh, I don't know if maybe today's video or the next video. Uh, there, are, there are some parts that I have for this guy that we will be installing very, very soon, so stay tuned for that. But today, we gotta tackle this first, so let's do that. But Big James is here, it's time to go whip out the speed. The speed is coming out, the Rumble Squad is gonna be assembling very shortly. Big hums there, here we go. Making progress here, you guys can see, we've got plenty of snow out here, even though we're about an hour, an hour and a bit further south. They, they just got hit really badly by that ice storm that we got that just got it all in snow and obviously snow doesn't melt as fast as ice because um, it's reflective but we are almost there time for the rumble squad to assemble big james is here with the sparko sweater again <laughs> he's making a thing he said he told me he told me that every video that he's in he wants to have the sparko sweater which is pulling up there she is james still dirty yeah, well, we're just gonna magically get clean. No fake bat, no fake battery this year. Battery pack. Ready? Yep. Six month cold start. The Hoon Squad is coming back together very soon, uh, and I'm excited because that means the fact the cars are coming back out means that my car is coming back out very soon, which means the GTR and Corvette race may or may not happen. If you guys want to see that, smash the like button on this video, uh, and I'll make it happen. I'll ship both cars, get two professional race car drivers to race both of them, see which one's faster. Obviously, in Mexico, in Mexico, that's where I'm going to ship the cars to. In to Mexico, see which car is faster in Mexico. I'm, I'm I, I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this one, but uh, I still think that it'll be a good race nevertheless. We're gonna head out back to town. We're about two hours away from town. Uh, again, if you guys watched my previous video where I've stored it, you guys will know James absolutely loves, loves to store his cars in the middle of nowhere when you can get the same rate in town. James is on his way out and just dropped me off. Let's get a little rev time though. Ooh, the, the rumble guys, the rumble. Man, that thing, it's, it's very deep. It's very rumbly and deep. I hope the, the, the camera does it justice. It's super rumbly and super deep. So for you guys that were wondering what happened, basically I was driving along and then I heard this noise that I filmed from my phone. So again, I'm sorry if the audio and video quality is not amazing. It is what it is. You can hear it, I think. I've cracked the window a little bit, but I don't want to like fully take the camera out or all you hear is wind noise. But listen, you can hear it. As I slow down, the noise goes away. All right, guys, I've kind of come to the conclusion. I hope you guys can hear that that this is not a steering wheel thing. Instead, it, it's probably one of those typical like rocks in your uh, brake rotor sound or the brake rotor is just screwed. Because look, if I turn the vehicle completely off, so the car is just completely off right now, there is like, it's, it's, it's off. You can still hear that. And as I brake, the sound goes away. Let me just turn it back on. But yeah, it, it is definitely breaks. So yeah guys, you guys can tell there is a problem within this general vicinity here. 
I mean, guys, it's so loud and prominent that even just moving it, you guys can hear it. Take a listen. And this is moving the car like, I don't even know, that's not even like a centimeter. All right, so as you guys can see, I haven't even bothered to put the jack stand on there yet. I just want to jack it off off the ground to see if it is indeed the brakes. And as you guys can probably hear by that absolutely phenomenal sound, I absolutely love it. Cringe, it is definitely in there. So let's go ahead, take this wheel off, get the jack stands on and uh, see what the hell's going on. All right, homies, we got the well, I only unscrewed this top bolt, so there's one bolt that goes right in there. Uh, I think, what was it, 16 mil? Uh, what did I use? Do, 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 do. Put a little light here. It was a 14 mil, so you need a 14 mil to get access to that one. So that one went right in there, and that's that bolt. And then you gotta untie this piece right here from that so you can get it open. Now you could take this one off and take the caliper off completely, but in this case it's irrelevant because all I want to do is pull off the pads and see what the hell is going on in there. We got the brakes out as you can see, nothing up here, nothing in the back and would you look at that, no sound. <laughs> as, I, as I thought, I had one too many hooting session with these brakes. Uh, let me see if I can get focus, you guys can see there is absolutely nothing left of this. So, yes, I knew I needed to get brake pads. I didn't need, I, well, I mean, if you guys saw the last time I switched over to winter tires, you guys would have noted that I said that my brake pads were probably at 20, 30%. I wasn't expecting it to come down this low over just the winter time and like, I, I mean, I probably did like two, 3,000 miles this winter, but uh, yeah, these things are completely done. Um, so I, I, I don't think, honestly guys, I don't think there's a point of putting them back on just because of the fact that I'm, obviously I need to replace these. Like if you guys know anyone, anyone at all that has driven a vehicle with pads less than this, let me know because this is completely, it's flat. Like there is nothing, there is no grit at all. So, uh, now we know, now we know why, well, I think the sound was probably here, you guys can see, like hopefully you guys can see, I'm holding in the light, this is like, there's no pad material left there. So what I'm thinking was that this was probably grinding against the rotor and causing that weird sound, I don't know, maybe there could have been a rock. I all right, Bandoleros, next day here, we are on our way now to go pick up some performance brakes for the gen. So I figured I'd take the uh, the, the vet. It's been it's been really cold and shitty. I uh, haven't driven it at all for the past like week, week and a half. So, and I got enough space in here to kind of put everything in. So, you know, why not? Let's go pick it up. So boys, we got our new rotors in there and our new pads over there. I've tilted the, turn the steering wheel, you gotta work with your car, not against it, so it makes it easier like that. So what I'm gonna do is take off that bolt right there, which takes off the caliper housing. Uh, so once that falls off, I will be taking out the the actual rotor itself, replacing it with a new one, and then, well, I'll uh, catch up with you guys probably at some point between that and, uh, and when the rotor comes out. All right guys, so we have the rotor fully exposed. We got the caliper off there. Uh, and those little, uh, that, well, the, the little screws that hold that in, Oh my God, they were rusted in there. So I had to, as you guys can probably see some WD-40, had to whip out the breaker bar, but I did manage to get it out. Um, but of course this is like completely uh, rusted in. So I'm probably just gonna have to take a hammer, uh, loosen it up and uh, that should come right off. I uh, got the hammer ready. So next clip, hopefully you guys don't see anything there. So the rotor is out, there you see it there. Now on these gen rotors, I've never seen a car that does this. Uh, they actually, drill, or sorry, lock the, the rotor in with two extra screws. And one of them, you guys can see there, was so soft, like these screws are super soft. This one came out, no problem, you, you can see that. The other one though, half the screw's still in there. So I, I don't know, like, I mean, you can see the screw right there. That's what the other one looks like. And then this is, well, the, the one that's still in, in, in there. Ah, uh, to be honest, to be quite frank with you guys, these things will be held in with the wheel and the caliper. Uh, I don't know if I'm, I'm gonna make too big of a fuss getting this thing out, because I think, I don't know, I, I feel like this would be, this is gonna be quite the task to get out. Um, yeah, I, I, I really don't know, I'm not sure. Just maybe it, it rusted in there and then it snapped, because it, it was super soft. I tried to do it with a normal uh, 003 Phillips, and it was, it, like, I was actually just, 
with a little bit of torque, I was actually eating away at the uh, at the screw there. So I had to whip out the uh, the actual impact to get it out. But I mean, I didn't even put that much torque in it, and it, it snapped in there. So I don't know. I'll, I'll see. I'll tell. I'll let you guys know what I decide. All right, so we got the new rotor in there. Uh, as you guys can tell, I didn't go for like slotted, vented, drilled, or anything like that. I just went for like an OEM-like setup. These ones are supposed to disperse heat a little bit better than the OEM setup, and which you can see is an absolutely horrendous condition. That is like one of the worst brake rotors I've seen. Uh, and well, obviously in comparison to this brand new one, it looks terrible. Um, but yeah, the StopTech ones are supposed to disperse heat a little better, so I just went with that. Um, again, I'm not looking for anything crazy. I got the vet for hooting now, and obviously we still got the GTR. So this thing will probably not get, well, it'll still get some hooning days, but not, not as much as it used to. So really no point in spending uh, like an extra, I think it's like $400 to do that. I, I think this is totally fine. Next step here is to use this brake cleaner because obviously when you buy new brakes, they kind of put like a little coating on there to stop this from uh, from rusting surface rust. So I'm just going to clean that up and then we're going to bolt everything back up. So I, I won't show you guys the cleaning process. You literally spray it and then wipe it down. <laughs> Very simple. So the next thing you want to do, especially if you live, well, I, actually this is a good practice anywhere, but especially if you live up in the Arctic like I do, I put anti-seize right there so that this thing doesn't get kind of like I don't know, rusted into the hub there. That is exactly what you don't want. Just go buy yourself some anti uh, anti uh, anti seize right like that, and uh, have that on. I've already cleaned that up with some uh, some brake cleaner, and now we're ready to go put everything back together. All right. So next thing you want to do, put some anti seize on your uh, the back of the brake pad so it doesn't seize into the caliper there. So I've gone ahead and done that. I will give you guys a comparison of. I think this is yeah. This is the back. This is the back. So that is one back. So you can see the meat. This is what well a brand new one looks like. Obviously as it wears down, it'll wear down. But look at this. For perspective, look at that. That. <laughs> Yeah, definitely got a full use out of it, I'll say that much. All right, so I've loosely put that in place. Uh, obviously, I haven't tightened down those bolts yet. You're gonna wanna do that. Uh, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna first add back that guy over there again, and then I'm gonna tighten everything down. The other thing I wanna do is lube these movement bolts. So those are those guys in there. You're gonna just wanna use uh, some silicone as opposed to some other material so it doesn't ruin this thing, the rubber. So these guys are all lubed up. You can see I made sure that it's all lubricated and then we're now we're gonna go attach that. So using this breaker bar, I tightened these bolts back up to spec, these guy, this guy right here, and then likewise the sister down here to 98 foot pounds. You can go between, they suggest 95 to 100. Uh, anything more than that is excessive, anything less than that could be dangerous, but I think honestly you could probably go as low as 80 on each, but uh, yeah, just put it back to spec, whatever your manual says. Uh, or you can just do an approximation of like 90, between 90 and 100 essentially, if you want to go for a big range. All right, so the only last thing I did was put the guide pins back, loop those up, obviously you guys saw that earlier, and then I attached the other bolt that secures those in. So those are gonna be compressed at around 20 pounds, uh, 18 to 20. So you guys can go ahead and do that, and then that pretty much finishes this one. Well, the only thing left is to put the actual wheel back on, but that's uh, fairly easy work. So let's uh, go ahead, I'm just gonna test it out. I'm gonna spin it, stop it inside, uh, and just make sure it stops. Obviously, I can't show you that on camera, but yeah. All right, boys, we got the car turned around here. We got the front, obviously, there. Now we're servicing the rears. I'm gonna do the other front one momentarily. The rears, uh, all I did was opened up the top pin here, the guidance pin is still in there. As you can see, it's, I mean, it's, it's all right. It needs a little bit of lube. Actually, it's pretty decent. Uh, I, this is the first time I'm looking at the pads. I haven't, as you guys can see, have not pulled them out yet. They, they seem to have decent amount of life left, which is what I imagine them to have. So I'm just gonna go grab a flathead, take those out. I'll show you guys what that looks like. Uh, and I will be back in, well, a few seconds. Here's what the rears look like under the light. As you guys can see, worn evenly, which is exactly what you want, which means my guidance pins are working correctly. Uh, they probably, I don't know, probably have like, I wanna say 40% left on them. But it's good practice to replace, if you're doing the fronts, uh, typically it's good practice to do the back. You can see the wear indicator bar here. 
nowhere close. Hopefully that comes across on camera. But yeah, good thing that they're wearing evenly. That means my guidance pins are, are working fine. Um, I don't know, if I, if you guys want these, I'll give them away for free. If you guys have a Gen Coupe and just need something to keep you over for a few months or whatever, or a year, this is probably good for another year. A few more hooting sessions than these guys for sure. If you guys want them, uh, DM me on Instagram, the.redliner. I will uh, gladly, you can come pick them up for free. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you them. I'll give you the other set. And if you want the dead fronts, I don't know why you would, uh, I'll give you those as well. So boys, I finished up the passenger side rear. Obviously there wasn't really much to show you guys. It was the exact same process as the front. So I just put the tire on. But what I wanted to, I'm doing this side now, but what I wanted to show you guys is take a look at this. This is what driving in the Arctic winter does to your vehicle. That right there, boys and girls, that is rust damage to the extreme. Well, not really. That's just mostly surface rust. But guys, this is a, Washed vehicle. I washed my, honestly, I washed my Gen um, probably once or twice a week in the winter. Uh, actually, sorry, once every once every week or once every uh, once every two weeks. Um, and I washed my hand. Like I do a thorough, thorough wash, not one of those crappy drive-through washes that doesn't even get any of that. And while you guys can see, look at the salt build up here. I mean, look at that. That's that's all. Hopefully, the camera is doing it justice. But that's all salt. That is pretty, well, it's, it's, there's a good amount of surface uh, rust there. So, I mean, it is what it is. So, you know, when I complain about the Arctic winters, this is one of the uh, beautiful things that it does. We're gonna conclude the brake project. If you guys probably saw this already, the video, I'm still in the process of doing it. So guys, that's gonna effectively conclude today's video. If you guys enjoyed this one, please give it a big thumbs up. Help YouTube push out my videos, and more importantly, found it informative, or if it helped you know about your brake system, please give it a big thumbs up. I very much appreciate it. I've tagged this video for brakes. If you guys did, please, please, please hit that thumbs up. Let's do one last pull as I sign off. I'll see you guys next video.